Welcome to the Clock Tower, I'm Brandon, and today we're doing yet another Fate deck. This time looking at the Dark Sakura build, I really wanted to play into this level 1 Sakura that allows you to change a servant character into one of the corrupted servants. And I was really wanted to play around with that idea, and this is the list I came up with to kind of play into that idea. We're playing this level 1 Sakura to make this kind of happen. Effectively what this does is this eats up a lot of hand, and it turns that hand into cards on field by changing your servants into other cards. So you can turn essentially zeros into these level 1s and level 2s to help throughout the mid game, so that way you can help set up a level 3 end game. I run the level 3 top end for Sakura, the Dark Sakura, in part also because she's relatively cheap too, right? You need 6 stock and 4 hand to potentially triple this combo. So that combo being a stock charge, right? Being on the salvage stock charge up to 3 cards on the top of your deck when you attack. So that way when you attack, you can also pay 3 pitch 1 to Icy Tail 6. Remove the bottom 6 cards of your opponent's deck to put them into waiting room and deal damage equal to the number of climaxes revealed in that. To get the additional hand into hand, right, because pay 3 ditch 1, on play the Sakura does draw 2 ditch 1. So you're able to potentially filter a card drawing through and adding an additional card to hand. So it places the card in hand. As long as you have those 4 cards in hand, including the climax, you're able to make this happen. Potentially you could use this to draw into the climax or draw into another copy of the Sakura itself. So being able to potentially just kind of draw into the pieces you need is also a fantastic thing for this deck as well. To get to that point, to make sure we have those resources, we do run the level 1 combo with Elia. This is on pants. This is a Maguro combo, right? So looking at the top four cards of your deck, choose one, add to hand based on trait, master or servant character into hand. Your stock does need to be five cards or less, which is actually a pretty big deal with this deck. And I'll explain why when we get there a little bit more, but effectively stock is actually something we need to keep uh, pay attention to with this deck. This allows us to be able to potentially plus cards into hand, which is what we need to be able to help with our level one game. The Corrupted Servants we're bringing in is the Corrupted Knight Saber Altar. This is a 1-2, which sits at about 9 with Encore, which is pretty insane, right? A level 1 9k, not including any other bonuses. So, real potential to set board here, right? Especially since Alice has been nerfed, and now that Alice is going to be a little more interesting, that those boards that you're looking to face off against, this actually can start competing with. So, I think it's really fun, and I think it's really interesting to have this in there. Uh, you also have then at level 2, that Corrupted Mad Warrior Berserker sits at 7-5 base, but on attack gets power equal to the number of other characters you have on board times 1,000. Base 7-5, attacking 11-5 without any other additional bonuses. Reasonable number. Reasonable numbers. It's also 2 soul, so being able to change a 0 into the 2 soul I think is actually fantastic. Going from 0, working our way up, we have Pristine Beauty Saber. This is our Brainstormer. Pay 1, Rest Self, Search Brainstormer as well as when Climax is placed, grant 500 power to two different characters. That's fine. Big part, she's a servant character, so you can change the Brainstorm into one of those other characters. That's actually pretty notable because we can actually use the Brainstorm effect, push her up into an attacking position, and then ditch a card from hand, maybe even the card be Brainstormed, to be able to spawn out either the Saber or the Berserker at level 1 and level 2 respectively. So effectively, we can turn stock into a card to be able to turn this into the attacking character that we want. That is a line of play that can happen. So being able to be able to turn even the Brainstormer into an attacking figure while getting the Brainstorm in allows for some interesting lines of play. We also then run the Keeping Her Convictions Rider. Again, another opportunity to convert stock into cards. This is a pay one clock self from the top of deck to salvage a character from waiting room. Master or Servant, and it does not specify level, so we can choose any kind of level from Waiting Room. Also has the ability of when damage dealt by this card is cancelled, you may put it into stock. So you can also potentially just kind of deny board that way as well. Fantastic card. Again, that conversion from stock to hand, really important in this deck. We also have the Elia level 0. This is a mill piece that's really effective in terms of use for the deck. It helps us get more cards into Waiting Room, so we make sure we can have the cards in Waiting Room to spawn out on stage. This does only search for masters when looking at the top four, choose one, but being able to have a relatively balanced list of master and servants, you're more than likely to run into a master character. But there is a good possibility that this does whiff, uh, which is worth noting here. 
We also run the top mage caster. Again, this is another way to potentially get cards into hand. This allows us to potentially refund zeros. It allows us to power pump over things as well. This is a stable card. It's also a master and servant trait. So you could get it off of Elia, but also turn this caster into one of the corrupted servants. We also then run the Warcry Berserker. This is our bonder to our level one combo. So not only is it a bonder to our level one combo, it's a filter card, but also a servant that can change into one of the other bigger characters. So we can play this down at one, bond into our combo, put combo in the other lane, and then turn this card into, say, Saber. So all of a sudden we have a massive board sitting at level one. But that rounds out our zero lineup. It's a very concise lineup, but it's very effective in the tools that it does, right? Conversion to stock to hand, trying to plus back into hand with the caster, getting our level one pieces, both our Elia and our Berserker. Going into level one, we already talked about the Sakura, but realistically what the Sakura looks like is it's a back row piece that as an act, you can ditch a card from hand and sacrifice a servant character from stage, all by resting this card to turn it into the other. So we could bring on the 1-2 Saber from Waiting Room without paying a stock cost, which I think is very relevant here, because that means we're not, convert, we're not committing that stock to making that happen, which means we can play with that stock in other ways. It does eat hand. And realistically, you can only do this once per turn per soccer on board. So you're not doing this very often. It's really much that off lane happening at every stage of the game. But you can do that at every stage of the game, starting at level one up you could do that. So I think that that's really important for this deck and a really like niche little package that's happening throughout the game. And I really wanted to build this package in, so I was kind of finding the deck to play around it. We also run the Corrupted Night Saber Altar. We talked about this a little bit, 9k Encore. You can spawn this in at one. We also run In Charge of Fubuki Rin. This is our ring card that allows us to be able to effectively try to convert stock to hand by when playing a climax, pay one to look at the top four and choose one added to hand based off of master or servant traits. There's a wall of text on this card, right? The important part is global 500 power and the Amagi part, right? But able to control your stock and convert stock into hand is the essential piece for this card. That's why we run this card. We can't talk bad guys in Fate without Kirei. So Kirei, I also threw in this little package between these level 1 cards because I think there's actually something really valuable here. So I run the Baptism Rite event, which allows that when it's in memory, all of your other characters get a thousand power. So we're boosting our field of power significantly. It does come at a steep cost, which is a pay one and clock yourself. And so essentially you're running out of hand even faster with this package in play. It does bond for it, so you can actually like ditch out to be able to get it and put it in play. Realistically, you're probably maybe putting one or two of these into memory at best, but all of a sudden your pieces are even bigger, right? If you can get two in at one, which is crazy. If you can get two in at one, all of a sudden your saber is sitting at 11. That's our level one lineup. That is the majority of the cards in the deck, and that is the majority of the things we're trying to do here. We do have the 2-2 Corrupted Mad Warrior Berserker. I already talked about this card. We talked about the level three Sakura. That is the deck. It does the, hey, we're converting our cards from zero into bigger cards. Which, to be fair, it doesn't have to be zeros, right? You can convert that saber altar into the Mad Warrior Berserker, right? You just need Servant cards. But most of our Servant cards here are level zeros, so being able to then convert those zeros into, into the Corrupted Servants I wanted to play into it, here it is. And I think it actually has something really good potential here. Is this going to be meta-breaking? No! No, it's not! But is it going to be fun? Yeah! Yeah, it is, and it actually works out really well. You're able to do some really weird things with this deck, that you wouldn't normally think of, and it also really helps keep your hand clean too, realistically, because you're running through a bazillion cards in hand. Which is partly why I played the Ilya, because I wanted to also have the pants trigger to be able to spawn climaxes in hand. I just wanted to constantly be filling my hand with things as much as possible. Pants triggers, salvage triggers, as well as the coin flip caster, just trying to get as many of these like potential pluses to hand as possible. But that's really it, that's the deck, that's the whole thing. And I think that actually works out really well, right? Because you're starting at level zero, you're going right in level one, you just continually start spamming servants. As you start spamming the servants out, trying to get that 2 2 berserker out and just spam soul over and over and over again. Playing a zero, turn it into the two soul, keep going over and over again. Not only that, but the corrupted servants have ways of trying to stay out on field longer. So it's like just trying to continually keep those servants on board, ready to go, burning through cards to be able to make this happen, and then the end game pays for itself. 
With that in mind, that's been the deck. On Thursday, we'll have some gameplay for it as we see the interesting profiles that we have here as a part of this. And then dive in, in next week on Tuesday, we'll have another clock talk as well. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube thing. And until next time, have a good one.